Hi, this is Ken. Once again, welcome to Prayer Line. Precious one, I want you to know that today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today, I want to talk about changing your name or consecrating or sanctifying your name. Changing your name or consecrating or sanctifying your name with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Why is it? Why is there the need for you or for me to change our names? Precious one, I, I came to tell you that we have some Christians or unbelievers who are having struggles, difficulties in their lives because of the name they bear, because of the name they inherited from their bloodline. And that name, if it is not changed or sanctified, it will continue to place a curse upon them so we have some people and you know the thing is that when you become a christian the bible says that if anyone be in christ is a new creature behold all things have become new once you become a born again believer i want you to know that you have been redeemed by the precious blood of jesus christ shifted from the domain of satan into the marvelous light of christ no more has satan has any uh, rulership over your life because now you're under the covering of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. If you now press yourself, because the Bible says that as many as believed on him, to them he gave them the power to become children or sons of God. If you if you take on the power of the Holy Spirit and you press yourself, you will manifest the full image and the full blessing and the full nature of Jesus Christ in your life. But sometimes some Christians, when they become born again, and they have now been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the light. They don't press themselves into the kingdom. They are just standing still and they are playing lukewarmness. So sometimes the devil is able to use or reinforce um, generational curses, generational covenant and vows which their great great grandparents did in the past against them. So you find out that we have some Christians who are going through struggles because of of the family lineage they come from or because of the name they bear and today god has brought me your way to expose some of the names which are holding people captives and why if you are finding yourself to be you know uh, experiencing retrogression or limitation or some uh, some some forces are fighting against your destiny it is probably because maybe you have to pray and tell god to change your name or sanctify your name most of us we have to pray for a sanctification a sanctification or consecration of our names we will have to now rededicate our very names to god that god himself will breathe his favor breathe his blessing into our lives and break us loose from every generational curse or every ancestral ties which is holding us captive and today i'm going to open your eyes of understanding so father let's pray father in the name of jesus christ may you give me uh, wisdom knowledge and may you speak through me to speak to your children and father god almighty your word says that we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free or set us free may the truth in your word set the captives free even in jesus name amen and amen um i want you i want to begin by telling you that um how many of you how many of you of my listeners how many of you listeners who are christians would um ever give birth to a girl and name your child um beautiful serpent or beautiful gay, um snake how many of you will do that how many of you believers hearing the sound of my voice right now would ever give birth to a beautiful girl child and when you look at the girl child, you decide to say that I'm, I'm, this girl child is so beautiful that I'll call her beautiful serpent or beautiful snake. Will any of you Christians, born again Christians, call your daughter as beautiful as the child is, as adorable as the child is, will you call her beautiful snake or beautiful serpent? Majority of you will say, no, I wouldn't do that. But do you know that? People are constantly calling their girl child beautiful um, serpent or beautiful snake. Let me give you an example. I want you to right now, right now, just Google in this name and you'll find out the meaning of the name. Google in the name Belinda. I want you to Google in the name Belinda. Google in the name Belinda, Belinda. And you'll find out that the meaning of the name 
Belinda means beautiful serpent. Beautiful snake or beautiful serpent. Would a child of God ever call his or her child beautiful snake? No. This um, knowledge came to me when one day a minister of God was ministering. And then um, during the time of deliverance, God said that the woman she's um, praying for has a problem. And when the Holy Spirit diagnosed the uh, root cause of the problem, the problem was the fact that she was bearing the name Beautiful Serpent. She was called Belinda. And those, um, because of that name, it was having influence in her life. So she had to be, um, they had to break her loose from the influence of that beautiful serpent which was manifesting in her life. And that's why it is very important that some of you, you need to get your name changed because you don't even know. You don't even know who you were named after, who that person was. You know, some of us, we've inherited last names from our great-grandparents or from our great-grandmother or from somebody. And you never know the kind of life that individual was living. And now you bear that name. And probably that person some years back was in witchcraft, was into voodoo, or was, uh, was doing something which was against the will of God. And so, you know, curse came upon his life. And now you bear his name. You will inherit not just the name, but the influence of the curse also in your life. That is why today God has brought me into your life to tell you that some of you, you need to change your name. Some of you, you need to consecrate your name. You have to um, allow God to you know, breathe his blessing and break you loose from every uh, influence of negative names that you bear, which is affecting you. We have people who are going through um, a, a vicious cycle or trend in their whole family. There is a family which everybody is dying out of, uh, at the age of 30 or at the age of 40 or everybody is goes through divorce or nobody is able to marry or there is some a curse that is placed upon the family because of the name anybody who comes from that line will experience the same cycle or trend of curse in their lives because of a name because sometimes you don't know who your great grandfather from the fourth generation 400 years ago who those people were what they were involved in and now you have become a christian you have been born again yes so you are sensing some things going on wrongly you look at your cousins you look at their, your nephews you look at all your family members and you realize there is a cycle there's a sometimes it could be a sickness and the sickness Sometimes people call it genetic. Sometimes it's not genetic. It, it, it is satanic. It is something going through the family line. Everybody seems to be dying because of diabetes or because of um, this specific problem. Or anybody who marries will get divorced. Or people, women in that family are not able to marry. It could be because of the name that the family members bear. The family members bear. So you have to be very careful the kind of family you come from and the name you bear. Who are you named after? Who was that person? That's why uh, uh, now that you are a believer, before you name your child after anybody, make sure that you do your homework to find out who that person is, what that name represents before you call that uh, your, your children that name because names do have influence in the lives of people. Names do have influence. Name, no name sometimes people's name represents who they really are and i'm about to prove to you i also wanted to let you know that in in india in the nation of india only with the hindu uh, religion the hinduism in hinduism they have more than 330 million deities or gods 330 million deities or gods and you know what many of these indians once uh, are named after some of these idols or I, some of these gods. So sometimes when missionaries live here from the United States or leave any other country to India to go and preach the gospel and people get converted, sometimes what they do is that they change their names because most of them are bearing the names of deities or idols or gods. And what do you think those idols will be doing in such because they are they are intertwined or connected to the uh, uh, the, the, the demonic spirit? You no, know, your name is you were named after a deity. They have almost three hundred and thirty million deities or idols or gods, and majority of the Indians are named after these deities. In food, uh, when you go to Haiti, Haiti in the nation of Haiti, voodoo 
of Voodooism is not just a, a, a religion. Voodooism is a culture, the way the people live their lives. So majority of the people there are named after the, some of these demonic stuff. So sometimes when you become converted, you need to change your name. If you don't want to change your name, then you have to consecrate or uh, rededicate or uh, sanctify your name under the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That every demonic influence connected to your name, that will try to have effect upon your life and your children, children, children. You break yourself loose from all the past um, demonic influences and begin a new covenant with our Lord Jesus Christ. It is very important. I I want you to let you know that you know uh, you, you uh, you've read about this story called uh, about Jabez. Jabez, the Bible makes us to understand that his name Jabez meant pain. His mom just called him pain. Be quiet! Did his mom call him pain because the mom, when he was giving birth to this child, was going through a lot of pain. And so when he came out, when this child came out, the mom says that because I've gone through so much pain because of you, the cause because of you, I'll call you Jabez, which meant pain. So you, the Bible makes us to understand that this boy's life was mad with pain. Only God knows what that, what the kind of pain the mom went through. You can know that probably the mom, the the, the father of Jabez left the mom when the mom was pregnant or just uh, abandoned the, the, the wife when she was impregnated with Jabez and, or, and the woman had to struggle to um, go through this uh, pregnancy and take care of Jabez, you know, so in all, and you know, the women, when they are giving birth, they go through pain already. And so maybe this time around, um, delivering of Jabez was even exceedingly very difficult. So when Jabez ca came out, this woman was so bitter and says that, you know what, you have caused me such great pain in my life. Maybe because of you, I couldn't finish high school. Maybe because of you, uh, my life uh, has been miserable because your, your, your dad probably raped me or left me. So you, you are a pain to me. Jabez did nothing wrong, but because of out of pain from the woman, she named the child Jabez, which meant pain. And the boy's life from infancy was marked by pain. Imagine the kind of pain some of us have gone through you know, growing up. Maybe he had to end up in foster home. Maybe he couldn't finish schooling. Maybe there was no... His, uh, your mom, your own mom calls you pain. Meaning he doesn't really, she doesn't really love you and cares about you. So Jabez maybe was trying to make it by himself. Maybe his dad was a runaway husband, he was nowhere to be found, he was in prison or something happened. So imagine people who are growing up, especially in some of our, our communities, with their fathers being in jail, with their parents in addiction, with their you know, being junkies, and these children are uh, taking care of themselves basically. And the struggles that they have to go through in the ghettos, trying to make it in life, you no know, quitting school and trying to use different means of survival. And so imagine the kind of pain Jabez went through. So he, Jabez came to a point in his life, he realized that he couldn't endure the pain anymore because the pain was placing limitation. Everything about him was struggle. Everything about him was frustration. Everything about him was setbacks and disappointment and rejection and frustration frustration and bitterness because of a name he bared and the bible says that Jabez cried to the god of israel that thou may bless me that thou may enlarge my territory that thy hands may be upon me that thou may remove pain from me that thou may cause me help me not to cause pain and be, help bless me to be a blessing this man had to pray and to god and here the bible makes us to understand that and god answered his prayers and God you know, made him more honorable than all his peers until his name was sanctified and changed by heaven his destiny was remained the same but when he prayed God answered him sanctified his uh, his name consecrated his name set his name apart breathed blessing upon his name and then he began to be more honorable he began to be well esteemed he began to be respected he began to be reverenced in his in his generation because he prayed in Jabez's situation his name wasn't physically changed from Jabez he still kept the name Jabez, but in the archives, in the realms of the supernatural, there was a sanctification, there was a consecration, there was a blessing that was now breathed into his name. That's what I'm saying, that you either change your name or you sanctify or consecrate your name. But when we come to um, Jacob, 
The Bible says that Jacob, uh, uh, Isaac had two children, Esau and Jacob. And Esau is the firstborn, and Jacob is the secondborn. And the Bible makes us understand that Jacob's me name meant, Jacob means supplanter. A supplanter or a deceiver. So he ended up supplanting or deceiving his brother to sell his birthright to him. Then he goes forward to um, deceive his father to um, give him his birthright, which was meant for his brother who was the firstborn. And then later on he realized that his name, deceiver, supplanter, was fighting against him. And then what happened? One day he had to wrestle with an angel of the Lord that I will not let you go until you bless me. And the angel says that, okay, uh, I'm going to change your name. No more will you be called Jacob. But now, from being Jacob, a deceiver, from being Jacob, a supplanter, you are now going to be called Prince. Prince, which means Israel. Because as, as a prince, you have fought with God and you have fought with man. And you have prevailed. Until he wrestled with God. And that wrestling means that praying until God changes your name. He physically changed his name from Jacob into Israel. And Israel means prince. Israel means prince. So it is important that as believers, we learn that, hey, what does my name represent and what is the reflection of my name in my life as a child of God? Is there any influence of the past coming, having influence upon my name negatively? If there is, then you have to sanctify your name even in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example of some of the names and I want to just prove to you that every name has a meaning. Most names have meaning. Moses means that to, to draw, drawn from water. He was drawn from the river Nile when um, Pharaoh's um, daughter saw him. Isaiah means that God is my salvation. Isaiah, the prophet, God is my salvation. We have Joseph, which means that God will increase. Then we have Delilah. You remember Samson and Delilah. Delilah means the one who weakens. The one who weakens. What did he, she do? She weakened Samson. She made Samson you know, cut his hair and he weakened Samson. You no, know, Jabez meant pain. Jacob means supplanter. No, Samuel means that one who hears from God. Nabal, Nabal, Nabal is the husband of Abigail, and Abigail became the wife later on when Nabal died uh, to David. So David's wife was called Abigail, whose previous husband was called Nabal. And then the word Nabal means a fool or a scoundrel, a fool or a scoundrel. So the Bible is, even when Jesus Christ met Simon Peter, Simon, he says that no more will you be called Simon, now your name will be called Peter. God, Jesus Christ even changed his name. So, beloved, it is important for you to diagnose, to see what does my name bear and what connection or hereditary marks have I inherited from my family line with this name that I bear. Is it having negative influence in my life? Then you need to do something about it. I want you to even know that God himself has names. There are many, many titles of God. And in each one of these names of God, if you invoke it in faith, it will begin to work for you. If you invoke the name of God in faith, it will work for you. That's why the Bible says that God has given Jesus Christ a name which is above every name. That at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To those in the heavens, to those on the earth, those underneath the earth, when you mention the name Jesus, Every demon, every principality, every power, Satan and his, all his cohorts begin to panic. They can't stand the name of Jesus Christ. The name of what? Jesus Christ. The anointed Savior. The anointed Jesus Christ. Christ the anointed Jesus. The anointed Savior. Anointed Savior. No, Jesus means the salvation Savior. And Christ means that the anointed one. So Jesus Christ, the anointed Savior. When you mention the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and you use it against demons, they can't stand that name because the name is so powerful and so potent that it paralyzes, it destroys, it breaks every yoke, it breaks every bondage, it annuls, it frustrates, it roots out, it pulls down, it destroys and dismantles the works of the enemy. So anytime the devil comes against you, you have to confront the, the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I resist you, devil, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against every problem in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God has exalted the name of Jesus Christ that everything subdued 
dues. Everything bows down to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the greatest name that we have as Christians. When you use it with authority, it manifests. It can cast out demons. It can paralyze the enemy. When you use the name Jesus Christ, it's like an atomic bomb where it blasts your enemies and puts them up, uh, uh, put them asunder, even in Jesus' name. And there are some other names of Jehovah. God himself has meanings to his name. And if you are able to pray his name and invoke the name with understanding and meaning, those names will begin to work for you. One, I want you to know that Jehovah, Jehovah means that the Lord, the Lord, Jehovah means the Lord. If you look, uh, read Exodus chapter 6, 2 to 3, Jehovah means that the Lord. Then we have what is called Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi is that the Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner, your victory banner. Whenever you are conquering and you are winning victories, the banner that you have to show your enemies that you are conquering and you are more than a conqueror, your victory banner is Jehovah Nisi. He is our victory banner. And that is First Chronicles 29, 11, verse 13. Uh, First Chronicles 29, 11 to 13. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. Then we have God's name being Jehovah Rohi. Jehovah Rohi is that the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. David says that the Lord is my shepherd, so I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. If Jehovah is indeed your Rohi, your shepherd, you shall not want and you shall not be in need because he will provide for you. Then Jehovah is so called Jehovah. Jehovah Rafi, the Lord who is my healer. If you say, Lord, your name is Jehovah Rafi, you are my healer. So, Lord, heal me from my cancer. Heal me from heart attack. Heal me from diabetes. Heal me from arthritis. Heal me from migraine. Heal me from uh, uh, any pain in my body, back pain, nervous, anything. Lord, heal me because your name is Jehovah Rafi. He will heal you. Then we have Jehovah Sabbath. Jehovah Sabbath, the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts, he comes with his mighty angels to come and fight and give us victory. Whenever the demons and the principalities are warring against you, remember that you serve a God called Jehovah Sabbath. His ho the, the angels of hosts will come and fight and destroy your enemies. That's if you read First Samuel um, 1 verse 3. And the Jehovah Rophi, my healer, is Isaiah chapter 53 verse um, 4 to 5. So you have to know that God himself has names and his name has meanings and that meaning are applicable to your life. If you mention it and you invoke it in faith, it will work. Then he's, we have Jehovah Mekedeshim. Jehovah Mekedeshim, he says that the Lord is my sanctifier. He sanctifies you. He consecrates you. He will set you apart. That is Exodus 31 verse 13. That's why we are praying that Lord sanctify my name. Lord change my name. Lord change my destiny. Your name is in relation with you and your name also represents what your destiny can become. So Lord change my name. Change my destiny. Just as you change the destiny of Jabez. Just as you change the destiny of Jacob. Even in the name of Jesus Christ. Then we know him as Jehovah Chikenu. Jehovah Chikenu means that the Lord who is my righteousness, the Lord who is my heart, my righteousness. Oh, God has called us to live a holy and a righteous life. But until God works in us, He says that it is God who works in us, both to will His good pleasure. If God does not help us through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, there's no way you and I can be able to reach out and to be holy and be perfect before our Heavenly Father because God is holy. And without holiness, nobody can see Him. He said that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled because he is our Jehovah Chikenu, our righteousness. That is first Corinthians 1 verse 30. Then we know him as Jehovah Shaman. Jehovah Shaman. The Lord is present. Oh, I came to tell you that the Lord is present with me. The Lord is present with you as a child of God. That's why his name is called Immanuel. God is with us. Jehovah Shema, the Lord is present. That's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Then we know him as Jehovah Eli, Eli. Jehovah Eli, the Lord my God, the Lord my God. Is the Lord your God? Is Jesus your God? The Lord my God, Eli. That's why when Jesus Christ was nailed on the cross on Calvary and was about to die, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani, my God, my God. So Jesus Christ was saying, my Lord, my God, my Lord, my God. God. 
God is Eli, Jehovah Eli, my Lord, my God, Psalm, that you can find it in Psalm 18 verse 2. Then we know him as Elion, Elion, the Lord Most High, the Lord Most High, the Lord Most High. He's above every situation. He's above every problem. He's above every forces of darkness. He is the creator of the ends of the world. He is the creator of the whole universe. The Lord Most High, Psalm 38 verse 2. Then we know him as Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is my provider. I don't care about the economy. I don't care about what is going on. I don't care about Occupy Wall Street. I don't care about the Democrats, the Republicans, or the uh, 14 trillion dollars, or how many people are unemployed, almost 46 million Americans living in poverty, or 25 million Americans out of work, or one in every six persons living in poverty life, or the, how many Many people are in debt and uh, are foreclosing their houses, the banks foreclosing their houses, or in, uh, are filing for bankruptcy. I don't call because I know the Lord is my Jara. Jehovah Jara is my provider. He will provide for you. He will provide for me because he's a great provider. There is nothing that he cannot supply his uh, abundance of blessing upon your life and upon my life. His name is Jehovah um, Jara, the Lord who provides. And I came to tell you, God will provide for for you god will provide for your children god will provide for your bills god will make a way for you and provide for the family you will not be hunger hungry you will not be late behind your bills because jehovah jara will provide for you that's when you read genesis chapter 22 verse 14 genesis 22 verse 14 then we know him as jehovah adonai our master jehovah adonai jehovah god is our master then we know him as jehovah shalom he is our peace he is the prince of peace jesus christ says that the peace I give you, it is not the peace of this world. The world is filled with chaos. The world, the world is filled with commotion and confusion. But we Christians, we have peace because Jesus is our praise of peace. And he gives us the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. So I, hear, I came to tell you that names are powerful and names defines your life and your destiny. Make sure that your name is changed. Your name is sanctified. If there are something uh, around your life which is um, besetting you and limiting God's uh, ultimate purpose in your life. Now let's look at some of the things, um, definition about what names is all about. What names is all about. Names are synonymous with our nature. Names are synonymous with our nature. And they are legacies we leave for our children to inherit. They are the legacies we leave for our children to inherit. Because you are called this, your last name, you always bestow it in your children so most of us we have inherited names great from our great grandmothers or great grandfathers most of us are, have inherited names the names we inherit can impart favor and blessings to us or we can inherit generational curses from families we come from so the same way you have inherited your name you can inherit a, a, a name which uh, is attached with blessing and favor at the same time you can also inherit generational curses because if your great grandfathers or your great grandfather your bloodline were into idolatry were into uh, immorality were into occultism were into magic magic psychic uh, astrology um witchy boarding were into wizardry were into all these occultic event things then it means that that family is a curse and so whatever they had they did which god was angry with them and god was judging them now that you are out of it you may be having the same influence in the same too we have some people too who came from godly fam families where their parents and their grand grand parents were worshiping god they came to see god so they were praying worshiping god praying over their children so when you come from such a family the blessing of god the favor of the god the goodness of god is upon you because of what you inherited also from your fathers you are coming from a family which there is the favor and the blessing of the lord inside that family already a man's character is synonymous with with his name a man's character is synonymous with his name and you if you read the bible it is filled no, when Naomi um, came from going to uh, the other country and she came back and all her children, the sons were dead. When she came, they were saying, oh, Naomi is, uh, Naomi is back, Naomi is back. He said, that, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara, which means that you no know, uh, pain or bitterness because 
Mara means that bitterness or affliction or struggle because everything I have has been taken away. He, he, she changed her name because at that time she was going through so much pain. So I want you to know that names are synonymous with our character. Like a key, it can open or close opportunity depending on the inherent character or status of the bearer of the name. Some of your names can open keys or doors of opportunities because it is blessed, it has favor upon it, and some some names too also closes door before you because of what is attached to it. You have inherited um, an accursed name. Then we are going on to say that names do not only identify a person, but they also carry the character trait, trait behavior of the bearer. That's why it says that First Samuel 25 verse 25. It says that, Please, let not my Lord regard this scoundrel neighbor. For as his name is, so he is. Neighbor is his name, and folly is with him. That is when David wanted to go and kill Naban because he had served Naban, protected his sheep from being devoured by wild animals. And now, when Naban was uh, about to harvest and about to you know, enjoy or uh, his, himself, David sent some people to him to say that, you know what, we've been protecting your animals and your, your shepherd, and so we are just coming to you that you may also bless us. Nabal says he wasn't going to do that. So um, David was so angry. That time, Nabal's wife was Abigail. Nabal, um, David was so angry that he went, um, he, he decided to go and kill um, Nabal for refusing to give him um, um, what he was due him. And then the Bible says that Abigail went to David and said, David, forget, uh, forgive my husband because his name means um, Nabal. And Nabal means that scoundrel. And as his name is, so he is. He's foolish. He's, fool, he's foolish. His name means foolish. And he's behaving foolishly. So please don't regard my husband. But please have come that I may give you um, 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 some of the animals, some um, food and clothing for all that you've done for us. And because of Abigail, David did not go and kill um, neighbor and what happens god himself punished neighbor because of his folly because of his name scandra he ended up dying at the at, at, at the wrath of god so please names are very 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 crucial i don't know the name of you bear i don't know the name you've inherited but today i came to tell you that you have to pray that father god i want this name to be blessed I want this name, you have to attach your favor to it, that wherever my names are mentioned, goodness and mercy shall follow it, because it has been consecrated, it has been sanctified with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I have disconnected myself from every ancestral curses, ancestral vows, or which was attached to um, demonic things, and now Lord Almighty, I connect myself into the very precious blood of Jesus Christ, and begin a new thing in my life, and my, uh, my seed, and my children's children's children. children even in the name of Jesus Christ.